ladies and ooh, 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 gentlemen, welcome back to the Landy Lodge where today, where today, we have two very, very, very amazing guests. If you'll pardon me, I've forgotten to undeafen them. Oh, wait, no, I did just fine. But anyway, allow me to introduce today's guest, March Caprice is own. Can we get a happy March Caprice in the chat while we're at it, by the way? Can we get a happy March Caprice? We've got Chain A and Violet Unversed here in the lodge today. Uh, look, one of you take the reins. How are we doing? Happy March Caprice and uh, welcome to the lodge. Happy March Caprice. Uh, it's finally here. Uh, thanks so much for having us, Landy. It's absolutely my pleasure. And Violet, how are you doing? Doing great. I'm sorry for my lovely technical issues that I can't be on camera with you guys today, but I'm here and super excited. Happy March Caprice, everyone. Happy March Caprice. And since that's what we're bringing up, before we dive into the kingdom hearts of it all and everything that we can expect, could you let the folks at home and those tuning in know what is March Caprice? Why did you bring it together? And, and what's the roadmap that led us here today? All right, yeah. take the reins on that, Chaney. Okay, <laughs> will do. Uh, so March Caprice is a now week-long event that celebrates everything Kingdom Hearts, everything content creation, uh, and it takes those people that want to make things but don't quite have a deadline or don't quite have motivation, it brings them together, gives them that motivation, and uh, creates this big week-long celebration where we can all come together and enjoy each other's presence for a week. And I think, you know, we were talking a little bit about it in the pre-roll, and this is something that I absolutely love about what it is you do, is, look, regard like, we didn't get a Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer today. We didn't get a Kingdom Hearts Missing Link trailer today. We, we, got, we got a tweet. That's what we got. A happy 22nd anniversary tweet. But that's the thing. The can you bring you, all of you over at March Caprice, bring us all together, regardless of if we get news, regardless of if you liked the last game or not, regardless of all that, we all come together and express our love for this series in so many different ways. I mean, you have concerts, gameplay challenges, other podcasts, like there's no end to it. And again, I just think those kinds of things that bring us together, regardless of what's happening over in Osaka, I, I I just value that a lot. So allow me to say on behalf of everyone who enjoys all these events every year, this is your fourth year doing it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Because anything, anything that brings us together for a good time, I think, is good for the overall Kingdom Hearts community. Yeah, Honestly, we, of course. We wouldn't be able to have such a great event without our Kingdom Hearts community. It's not just the staff putting on all these events. It's all of the... Um, the user-made content, like you've mentioned, the other part podcasts, all the streamers, all of our artists. It's just wonderful to be able to bring everyone else who is so passionate about Kingdom Hearts all together for this beautiful event we have. Okay, so speaking of passionate about Kingdom Hearts, there is a mandatory question for Kingdom Hearts guests that come on this podcast. And, you know, I know y'all run March Caprice, but that, that'll get you some special privileges, but you don't get to avoid this question. Answer me this. Why Kingdom Hearts? There's so many different franchises out there spanning all all different sources of media. What is it about Kingdom Hearts in particular that that called out to you guys? Violet, take it away. Oh wow, okay, thanks for that. Um <laughs> so why Kingdom Hearts is it's easy, it's that beautiful franchise that's just easy to, you know, come back and forth to. Like I think I started playing Kingdom Hearts back in grade school when I got a copy of Chain of Memories for my Game Boy Advance, which is a great starting place in the franchise, by the way. That's my point, too. I just want to say oh, Chain of Memories. I love play. that. That's where it started for me. I love that. But then, you know, you kind of fall off it for a little bit because you don't have the system that it comes out on when you're in like middle school and don't have a PSP or a DS and you get to cry. Yep. But then you're, you know, high school, college, you get to play the remasters. It just keeps coming back into your life. And I'm like, wow, this thing is still amazing all of these years later. And then all the other people that I've met who love the series are also amazing, which sadly cannot be said for all the other game franchises that I like. So it's, you know, the community is just great to be able to have our wonderful space to keep coming back to. 
And what about uh, what about you, Chain? And guys, I'm hearing you about the mic. I got the mic turned up. We're gonna be all right. But uh, what about you, Chain? What is what is it about Kingdom Hearts that kind of drew drew you in as much as it has? I it's the same answer everybody else gives. I mean, well, some people say a commercial, but for me, it was it it it's the the epitome of it, of the series. Friends drew me in. Friends are keeping me here. And friends are making me look forward to what's coming up. You know, if I didn't have people to talk to about Kingdom Hearts and nerd out about and go to weird online events about Marge Simpson, like, I don't know if I would be as, I don't think I would love Kingdom Hearts as much because, you know, uh, the community is where it's at. Uh, anything that keeps me engaged and keeps uh, my brain in the right space, it, it, you know, friends are going to be doing that. So it's got to be the friends. The way that you say that friends are keeping you here makes it sound like a hostage <laughs> situation. And that's very good. I know. My friends are keeping me here. <laughs> Blink twice if you need help. <laughs> that's, that's, that is fantastic, though. That, that's fantastic. Um, look, there's, there's a million reasons to fall in love with this series. But, you know, I think too often it's easy to get caught up in some of the negative internet buzz around kingdom hearts but they're a how do i put it if you know where to look there there's a lot more positive going on than um than negative and i think again mm -hmm. not to repeat myself as i have n numerous times here that's part of what you guys do that's so special look if you're a true kingdom hearts fan who can't read then you can't read the negative stuff online either Oh, now that's a strategy. <laughs> what if I just can't read? Oh, yeah, man. it solves all your problems. <laughs> okay. She's right. She's right. Uh, just if someone in the chat would let me know. Remember I told you guys there would likely be some technical difficulty? Well, here it is. Just let me know that my volume is okay. I've went and turned myself up. So just let me know that we're rocking or if I need to fix it up. But anyway, let's get into the future and what we can expect. Um, so again, we didn't get any announcements today, but without putting too much stock in our responses, because these are just shots in the dark, when yeah. do you expect to hear from Kingdom Hearts next? Oh, gosh. I, I was uh. honestly expecting right around now, because the Final <laughs> Fantasy, well, the Final Fantasy VII Part Two just came out, so in theory, Kingdom Hearts Four is the next, like, quote-unquote, big thing that they have in the pipeline, so I feel like before we get any future Final Fantasy VII news, we are going to get our Kingdom Hearts four. Is my my brain's process? Yeah, and I think that's kind of what I was thinking. That same kind of line of logic is, you know, they just finished Rebirth. Uh, they've got Missing Link that's been delayed a little bit. I think I don't remember little, if they gave it date. A little bit. A little bit. A lot of bit. <laughs> quite a bit. Um, but you know. Yeah, let them cook. Let them cook. Uh, they, yeah, I think we will be hearing from them very soon. Um, at least I like to believe so. You know, maybe, maybe April or Mayish is kind of what I'm what I'm thinking. But you know, if we don't, that's okay. Is, I've waited long enough. I can. What's what's a little little bit more time? You know. I'm just going to be slightly salty if we get Final Fantasy VII Part Three trailers and launch dates before we hear more about Kingdom Hearts. That's all I'm. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Oh, uh, I mean, I haven't had time to di digest uh, digest part two yet, so well, uh, we won't say anything about that here. Of course, it's a little too fresh well, off the off the dock, but yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll keep the spoilers light on Reaver. It just says a heads up, Landy, you are muted on our end, so I cannot hear you. Gotcha, I'm back on your end, but uh, yeah, okay. you are. <laughs> 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 Friendship, okay. Um, yeah, at the worst, by the way, guys, I know, my, I know my mic is low. In between me talking, I'm going to switch out the mic cable. But um, I guess what I want to ask both of you, if you would both go, what are you looking forward to most for the future of this oh. series between titles? What are you looking forward to most? Namora oh, can we, well, I'm going to give the biased cosplayer answer and say, Namora, can all of our favorite kids from the, other, from the earlier games... <laughs> Can we give them new clothes, please? Can I please have a new outfit right? for Aqua? Right? Can I please have a new outfit for Aqua? I am literally begging you. I will literally sell a kidney to get a new canon outfit for Aqua. I beg. 
I'd love I'd love to see a new canon outfit. On top of that, can we get Namine something? Anything? She's got a little white dress. She's got something. Okay, ooh, ooh, a little white rag. Let's give her something that she can wear that she can be proud of. You know? <laughs> let's give her something. Something let's you know, everybody's coming out in cage cage three with their with their fresh fits, you know. Ax Cyax Isa, whatever. I don't care. Isa came out with a fresh fit. And you're telling me Nominee has to stay in that one rag? Girl. Girl. <laughs> What are you doing? Anyway, before I get too much of on a, on a tangent, um, I, th- I want to say the thing that I'm looking forward to most um, is uh, definitely uh, it's good, the, the biased music lover answer. I want to hear that new music. I want to hear those nice, fresh tunes. Those, uh, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3 rehashed a lot of its soundtrack from previous games. And I love the remixes. I love Tension Rising, Reaper's Revenge. I love... Uh, the corrupted. Oh wait, we didn't get the corrupted. Hmm. Uh, but you know, I want to hear. I want to see what Shimamura's. I, I want new dishes. You know, I want. I don't want the same old pizza every day. I want. I want. A, I want another steak. I want another, another uh, nice wants, ice cream dessert. He wants to eat. I want to eat. I'm hungry. <laughs> I need more musical food. Cage three. I won't get into the negativity, but I'd like to. I'd like to see a little more of what of what uh, Shima Moore and the other composers could do. I mean, a, a good start is we have reality in the dark, right? No, oh, I'm a term. We do, we do. I think I'm still coming staticky, so feel free to keep going. I'm going to switch out my microphone entirely, so keep rolling on that. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So reality in the dark, good start. It's very, and it's it's given a, a little taste. Oh, we also have those. Um, those missing link tracks that uh, I've been jamming out to a little bit. Uh, haven't I? Don't have I haven't quite been listening to them enough um, to comment on them, you know, and compare them to what we're currently working on. But yeah, Reality in the Dark, great start. I want to see more. And um, one big fear that I've had since Kingdom Hearts 3 dropped, something that you that people may have noticed, noticed is that Shimamura has been doing, since I think about Birth by Sleep, uh, David, correct me on that if I'm wrong, if he's in, in the void there. Um, since Birth by Sleep, Shimamura has been doing less and less of the soundtrack. Like It's been taken over a little bit by people like Ishimoto, by Sekido, um, by uh, Kamioka, you know, a, a couple of other people have kind of taken the reins a little bit. And, you know, Shimamura has been with this series f- since the beginning for 22 years. Makes me a little nervous. Are we gonna, are we gonna stop here in Shimamura? Are we gonna, is she, is she, is she leaving? I don't want to say she's leaving because she has, uh, you know, she has composed things like, uh, actually, don't quote me on that. I don't know if she was the person behind the missing link tracks or uh, reality in the dark. Um, I'd have to check my sources on that one, but I'd, I'd like to believe that she's, she's not quite done yet, but you know, something very vital will be missing if, um, if she continues to go along this path of doing less and less for the series. She didn't even do the final boss track for three. Like, look, I know there, that people have opinions on that track, but I Melody, do. Maybe- Melody of Memory just has has brainwashed me, and I love playing that track on Melody of Memory so much, so I can say that it's a bop, but I'm going to get crucified for that opinion. <laughs> no, no, it's okay, it's okay. You know, if they can at least make a good map out of a bad song, you know, let's, we'll play that, we'll play that, we'll play that, uh, we'll have fun with what they give us. Yeah. I, I want to zero Landy, you're muted again. I keep, you know... <laughs> I'm going to unmute myself over here, but not so much there. So I think overall I'm having some kind of audio issue with my interface. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to have you carry the majority of this. Um, <laughs> let me say this. So you brought up that like Yoko's time may be coming now that she's doing less and less and less. Where mm-hmm. does the series go when some of these names we've relied on, like your Nojimas, your Shimamuras, and maybe even mm-hmm. your Nomura one day, like, where do you, how do you cool. stop playing out? God, you know, heaven forbid Nomura ever leave us. 
Yeah, heaven forbid Nomura leave us. Uh, happy, happy Marge lands. Um, yeah, I think. Oh uh, gosh, I don't. You know, Kingdom Hearts it's, is Nomura's baby. But go ahead, Liz. Uh, it depends. It depends on who they pass it off to. Honestly, we've seen like you know other long running franchises go through other hands. Like even I think on the Nintendo side, wasn't the Super Mario Wonder made by a team of people who? like are largely new to Nintendo and that still did really, really well. Mm -hmm, so you mm -hmm. just put people who are, you know, both skilled at what they do and passionate about what they want to do. And I think it'll still be fine. Like there's no, no need to doom and gloom about it until we have something in our hands. And even if you have it in your hands, there's always going to be something good to look for. I'm sure there will be. Mm hmm. That's a good optimistic way of looking at things. Um, and I, I, you know, I'd agree to that. Other people, you know, Shimomura is not the only composer out there. Nomura is not the only good writer out there. Um, that we've, if we have some good hands to give it to, why not see what they can do with the Kingdom Hearts series? Like, I love that idea. Let's see these fresh new spins. Let's see what they can, um, uh, what they can do with that, you know? We've, uh, I don't think it's ever leaving Disney's hands. It's never leaving Square Enix's hands. I know some people are like, oh, well, what if they ditch Disney some? It's not, you know, Disney has too much of a stock into this thing. Um, it's, it, we're, we're always going to get our, our Disney, our Disney fun in there. That's not leaving. Um, but, and I'd like to think that this is kind of Namora's baby. So I think that King Hearts would die out when Namora does. Um, but, uh, you know, weirder acquisitions have been had with series, so... I mean, FF15 was Nomura's baby until it was You're wasn't. right, you're right, but, that's true. But I still love that game to death, so. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah, and look at what, uh, Tabata, no, um... Yeah, Tabata. Tabata, thank you. Uh, look at what Tabata did, did with it. It came out a great game! Uh, and it's, you know, and... The, now we have this, you know, Vernum Rex stuff, and we have games like, uh, oh shoot, what was the Raynantis that's coming out? That kind of that took inspiration from uh, Fifteen and the other, and it's, uh, you know, it's father, if you will, the that we we won't name, but the uh, <laughs> uh, you know, good thing, good things can come out of change. Um, and if the Kingdom Hearts series hasn't taught you that, you know, we've seen Sora change, we've seen voice actors change, um, some by passing away, some by just recasting, but, and they've done wonderful with, wonderful things with it. So it's not going down the toilet anytime soon. Uh. So, and again, one sec, let me turn oh, can't hear you. Way up here. Yeah, Landy, you're not muted, but we can't hear you. <laughs> oh, you can, can you hear me Still now? can't. <laughs> what about now? I th I'm coming through on OBS, but Interesting. I, I wonder... wish I could read lips. I know, uh, right? <laughs> it's really funny. Oh, <laughs> he said, "Hold on, hold on." Okay. Sorry, I've got vegetables in the oven, and I'm pulling them out now. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, good, good, good. We are back. Cool. Sorry about that, everybody. It's, it's going to okay. be a technical episode on my end, but we're just going to have to Fits with the theme. We're just going to have to deal. All right, so all of that in mind, when it comes to the future of Kingdom Hearts, what to expect? Mm -hmm. Let me maybe pick your brains a little bit on what can we expect, do you guys think, in terms of mobile games in the future? Do games like Birth by Sleep and 358 over two days – are those just not going to exist anymore? Those more subtitle niche games, and now it's just mobile and number titles? Well, what are your guys feelings mm. on that? I hope not. Like, mobile <laughs> games... <def> <laughs> okay, like, let me clarify. Mobile games definitely have their place. 
but I much, much prefer gaming for anything with a story and with meat on it on like a console. Like give it to me on like Switch or PC or PlayStation. It's all fine. It's all good. But like if you put it on mobile, please give me like another way to play it. Like, and don't get me wrong, I do play mobile games. I have, like, dumb stuff installed. Like, I've got, like, the Miku game and, like, Pokemon Masters and Tsum Tsum and stuff like that. But those aren't to, like, sit down and get into the meat of a story Mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And, like, games, other games that are mobile games that I technically have installed but don't play on my phone, like Genshin, like, I play that on my PlayStation. And, like, Mm -hmm. let me me have my, my meat, my meaty games over there. Uh, 100% and you know I I love um I think a few years ago uh I get I guess here's here's the thing about uh so we'll we'll call them uh we'll I guess subtitles. we used to call them yeah subtitles that's that's a good term for it um as far as subtitles go I think yeah that kind of that halfway between like mobile missing link union cross and a, a number title but I I think we, I don't think that's a dead concept. Um, if this series has, uh, I know we're kind of entering this new era of uh, the Kingdom Hearts space, you know, but we're we're barely beyond three. We got Mel Mem, right? Um, so I think, I don't think it's a dead it's a dead idea. Uh, okay. And honestly, and to be honest with you, it's not something I've thought about. It's this is, you know. But uh, yeah, it's uh, I like th- I like the idea of having that because there are there are a lot of assets put into a number title. There's a lot of work. Not saying that the that the that the um subtitle games Birth by Sleep Recoded didn't have a lot of work, but you know Kingdom Hearts three, Kingdom Hearts two, Kingdom Hearts one that has so much like more put into it. I at least I believe than um than some of those smaller subtitles. Uh so it's we're not going to get that you know number title every year like we did uh with the subtitles between 2 and 3. Um so I hope that we'd still get fed little little breadcrumbs of subtitles cuz I still want to have fun. I still want things to theorize about and uh play and talk about and stuff. Um in between our wait between now and Kingdom Hearts four or four and five and five and six and so on. Yeah, and I think Kingdom Hearts lends itself to having a lot of these more niche subplots that need to be fleshed out, you know, like everything. Exactly. So that'll lead me to my next question. I, I'm I'm excited to hear both your responses to this. Who's getting benched? Ooh. Who who's who's gonna ride the bench in the Lost Masters arc? And I hate saying it, but I know it's gonna be my birth by sleep, kids. I just I know it. I feel it in my bones, and I don't like it, but I see it coming. They're the only ones who didn't get their new threads. Everyone else is like outfitted out and ready to go for the new games, and my birth by sleep kids didn't. Well, happy Women's History Month, but I don't. It's not looking good. <laughs> <laughs> for our women it's you know i'm I, I i would love to be wrong i want to be wrong i need to be wrong but it's uh you know you were saying with aqua not looking good for nominee it's not looking good for Kyrie. i i would actually disagree <laughs> on all three points. i have to disagree. please i actually think a lot of the boys are in more trouble i think she owns done if you want to talk about ladies that are done i think she owns sure. on the bench I know she got the new outfit. I think that's a farewell. I think the entire mm. day's trio is in trouble. Aqua's already training Kyrie. She has an assignment. Ventus connects back to Union Cross, which is merging with the current time. Yep. He's got an mm-hmm. assignment. Terra, mm-hmm. I think Terra's hitting the bench because Riku's <laughs> already fully trained, so he, yep. we don't need him for that. Aqua mm. Did Treehouse pay you to say that? <laughs> <laughs> the last one I'll leave you with, mark my words. Naminé will be a key player to getting Sora home because he hasn't thanked Naminé yet. They did You're right. You're right. They did that You're on right. purpose. She will be a big part of getting him home. You're right. Now, maybe that's all hopium. 
Hopium, copium, <laughs> cola shots, possible. That's what it is, but that's just how I see it. If I you're should... drinking the juice, I'm drinking the juice, you know? We're juicing. <laughs> I'm just begging, begging to give me Marley and um, Larkseen in Quadratum. Like, I am begging hard to see them over there. I want them to fight each other, not like in a battle. I want them to verbally get into a fight. <laughs> I think it'd be amazing. No, Larkseen, Larkseen demolishes anyone she, like, gets in a verbal fight with. I, She's just... But well, imagine Lorium's the one she can't. <laughs> I, I need it actually i need this in my life more than i thought i did right right and like i knew i needed this in my life since i saw the cage for trailer like i need to see marluxia in the pretty quadratum art like the fandom's not going to be able to handle themselves and i need to see it and now i need to see it even more to hear him bicker with uh uh lark scene yeah what? definitely definitely those those end and organization members i think we'll we'll see a little bit more of though I think so too. I, I think all the dandelions are in a way being drawn into Quadratum. That's what I seem, mm -hmm. seem to be seeing happening. That's why Strelutzi mm -hmm, is there. Mm -hmm. That's going to bait Lorium. And by baiting Lorium, you'll bait Elrena. Right? Sor is there. Maybe that baits Ventus. I'm just kind of... I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't Can, know. We have Skull? Can Skull exist again, please? <laughs> yes. I, I'm kind of begging for that too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I was crazy enough to think we might get her in KH three, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wear that fat L. <laughs> hey, they could they could still randomly push out another Kingdom Hearts three DLC. We never know. They could do whatever they want to. Could you imagine? <laughs> Dude, we, we would, in we the would year always, of our Lord. In yeah, in the year of our Lord, twenty twenty four, if they pushed out a random Kingdom Hearts three DLC <laughs> with just like no explanation, it just shows up on the shop one day. Shadow, like, sh it wouldn't be a shadow <laughs> drop, it'd be a darkness drop. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what other interactions? I'm curious. Like, so you see how, like, Lorium and Elrena have this, like, dynamic that's begging to be explored. Are there any other dynamics that call out to you guys? Luke Sword and Sora. Like, I want uh, something, you know, that whole card, uh, that whole card toss. Mm -hmm. It's like it wasn't just a hey good luck see ya. It's a it, it was a you know uh like he's like hey let's get together and I know we say that we'll say that to people all the time like hey let's meet up yeah yeah, yeah. and then you never do but <laughs> you know in a in a story in, in a perfect fantasy world we we actually get together you know and we actually talk. Um, no, so but Sora's so, so gonna have his little coffee job in Quadratum and you know, he'll run into him there. It'll be great. <laughs> Well, then they're meeting when they're just guys, you know? That's what they're yeah, doing. They're, they're, ju they're just guys being dudes. I'd like that. I, I'm mostly, I gotta say, I'm mostly into Lushu and Luke Sword. That seems like the new chess oh, match. Oh, yes. You know? Yes, 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 yes. Because I, I would love that. If you could take these characters from the previous arc and really up their importance in the next, like, I'm all for that. Because it feels mm -hmm. like Luke Sword was kind of along for the ride until KH3. So I, yeah. I hope they have a lot in store for him. Yeah, especially since, you know, Lushu was, uh, he's been there the whole time with uh, with uh, possessing uh, Zigbar there, or being Zigbar. Clarification needed, uh, source needed. But um, the, yeah, so seeing some of these new characters interact would be would be fantastic and wonderful. I'm seeing somebody say something about uh, Terra and Namine. That's, you know, oh. Namine being the person to call the the Terra aerial strike on her walkie-talkie. You know, that'd be an interesting dynamic. I'd I uh, uh, Characters that I don't normally see interacting, I, I will eat that stuff up so easily. I will eat up these just casual conversations. Like, that interaction in the Keyblade Graveyard with, like, Ventus and Roxas is just, like, a little look, like, you? You? Okay. Love that. More of that, please. People interacting who have no reason to interact, but they do anyway. Okay, so oh, that's a, okay. So with no reason to interact, but they do anyway. Because I was gonna bring mm -hmm. up Ansem the Wise and Namine. It's like I would kind of like to see him sort of confront that guilt, but well, no reason, but they do anyway. Man, imagine like, imagine King Mickey. And Scrooge McDuck 
as a subplot. That's the kind of thing I want from Disney and Kingdom Hearts. I want that kind of stuff dialed up to like a nine or ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little Disney, bit of more of that would be great. Yeah, Disney you say- are great, but take these Disney characters that are like in the plot and like really elevate them some more, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, you tell me that Scrooge and Mickey are talking to each other, and all that I'm hearing in my head is um, that Scrooge McDuck is taking on the role of Tom Nook and having to get paid back for all these gummy <laughs> ship finances. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that. Like, that's all I see in my head. It's like that. Mickey took out 30,000 loans to build all of these gummy ships, and now Scrooge is coming to collect. And, and some of the wise and a hacksaw. You're right. You're right. Oh, that wasn't anybody. That was me. Uh, that was, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, that's um, little little inter, little interactions like that would just, it would it would make me live. It would make me thrive. Uh, random, random people. Let's see. What do we got? Uh, we'll Another throw guy. in uh, we'll throw in uh stitch okay and chicken little <laughs> like Whoa. what what's going to happen with that no imagine that is like a dual summon you summon them as like they come together that would oh my nuts. gosh that would be that would be whack like the I see the idea of like Chicken Little being scared of Stitch because you know he's an alien. Uh, I see Stitch being very hungry for chicken. It could it could go any direction, you know. This is this is sad. This is actually a nice segue. I want to know now, both of you, who, mm-hmm. what Disney World will return? What okay, mm-hmm. rather, what Disney World do you want to yeah. see return, and what new Disney World do you want to be born? Ooh, <clears throat> Liz, do you have any? Or, Violet, do you have any uh, um, extra? An- uh, sorry, uh, uh, do you have any? Uh, <laughs> you're good. Violet, you're good. Violet, do you have any uh, like answers that you always that you always have uh, re- ready at the go for Disney World? You want to see? Um, because if Disney, not, I'll I, co- cook up with something while you think. I I know what new things I want to see, but for the old ones returning, I I need to think a little more on that. Mm-hmm. But for for new ones. I want there's there's two that come to mind immediately. I mm-hmm. want to see Bra- I want to see Brave. I really mm-hmm. want to see Brave cuz mm-hmm. I just I think it would be fun. Give me give me all the bears, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and um as far as I feel like would fit well in Kingdom Hearts, I knew the I know the movie itself wasn't well received, but like Raya and the Last Dragon would slide mm-hmm. so well into the Kingdom Hearts. Okay. Just everything that that series puts together. That's a that I mean they've got princesses of princesses of heart in that movie. They literally dropped the term princess of heart. Like that's you know. Um, yeah, and the the drone, the enemies, the better made of like darkness are like basically two steps away from being unversed. Let's be real here. It's like it's asking to be in Kingdom Hearts, right? Mm-hmm. It, right. It, it really is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think um, I would, you know, I'd agree. I'd love to see both of those. I don't think there's a franchise I ever, uh, I, I ever don't want to asterisk that I can think of right now um, that I wouldn't want to see in Kingdom Hearts. Oh, no, cor- correction. There is one, but we, that's not what the question was. Uh, but what I would like to, Disney movie I'd like to see return. I think I would uh, now I've talked I'm going to be talking about this a little bit in uh, another March Caprice entry actually so not to spoil that too much uh, but uh, I would love to see and now my mind just went blank I don't remember what it was <laughs> it's it's on the tip of your tongue you got it it's a yeah um, well we'll say new we'll say new worlds you know uh New world that I would like to that I would like to see brought in uh, is uh, Mo- is definitely Moana. We've we've been seeing some weird like missing link uh, um, uh, or in the missing link beta they showed a lot of like island um, environment stuff. So I think that maybe we might get it for Missing Link, actually. But if we were to get something Kingdom Hearts 4, like, I loved Pirates of the Caribbean as a world. And just being able to sail from, like, island to island. 
Like, I yeah, love that. that. So oh, yeah, that was I sweet. love that. You know, Pirates Pirates was my favorite Cage Three World, hands down. Um, so I would so Moana if it were to kind of incorporate that a little bit. Great, I'd love to see that. I feel like that's a perfect world for that. It's got beautiful water. It's got a nice story. Moana, well, Chef's Kiss. Plus, Disney um, also coming out with Moana too in the relatively near future as well makes that maybe more likely since they seem to like to push their their recent releases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think for a returning world that I would like to see, now that I've just opened it up another tab because I'm just completely blanking. Um, but no shame, uh, no shame. <laughs> but you know, I, I, any, anything that's kind of in the, um, the newer, the newer movies. Like, I would love to be able to explore. Oh, here we go. Here's a nice page. Can I ask uh, for new, new oh. versions of properties that have been in Kingdom Hearts before? Yeah, is that like? Yeah, yeah. can I? I, I still see it kind of happening in the back of my mind. Like we'll see like Alice in Wonderland and Sleeping Beauty oh, again, but please. we'll see like, but we'll see the live action. Like we'll have Tim Burton's Alice and we'll have yes. like the, the live action yes. Maleficent. And also give me the interactions between our, you know, our Disney, our beautiful Maleficent who we've had in the past and our live action Maleficent. Let those two talk to each other in Kingdom Hearts. That'd be an interesting uh, clash. Yeah, and you know, maybe it's the maybe it's the uh the maybe it's because I've like binged 46 seasons of Survivor but that I'm going on this island theme, but I would love to see a little, see a Lilo and Stitch world, you know? Yes. Uh something that's not space, but like you're actually in Hawaii and you're going to interact with, you know, Lilo and Nani and Pleakley. Uh we almost got Pleakley, we didn't get Pleakley. Um but, you know, some of those other more interesting characters than a uh, grand councilwoman, you know. So I, I'd love to see a Lilo and Stitch based redo of Kingdom Hearts. Dude, I beg for that every time I bring my Aqua costume to uh, Hawaii for photos for the convention. Mm -hmm. I, I beg for it constantly. I'm gonna beg for it. I'm gonna beg for it again this weekend. I've got a new Aqua wig that the ocean is just begging to take away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a normie. I'm just like, give me Star Wars. Just give me, if I need something new, give me Star Wars. I think it's such a perfect fit thematically. Mm -hmm. um, as for Marvel, I'm actually not crazy about Marvel joining mm -hmm. Kingdom Hearts. However, I think it could make for some fun summons. Like imagine an incredible yeah. Hulk summon. You know, like something just totally unhinged like that. So I'm, I'm about that. Um... As for returning world, Violet brought it up earlier. I'm, if you could bring back Alice in Wonderland and do it with today's graphics, you could make the trippiest sequence in the history of gaming. You really would. I would Murder's love mind and the modern graphics and the Alice in Wonderland aesthetic. It, it could mm -hmm. be totally unchained. You might say. Hmm. That's the dead opposite of me. But yeah. <laughs> uh. But yeah, love that. I, I would love to see what they can do with anything. You know, if we get, I admittedly didn't think I was going to love Olympus Coliseum in uh, in Cage Three when I heard that was back. I'm like, oh really? We're doing this? We're doing we're doing this thing that's been here forever? Okay, but like it. second best world in three, second best world in three, right? Over Pirates loved it. It was great. They bring Aladdin back. <laughs> <laughs> let's see what they can do let's see if they do something else with it you know how do you feel I, i've seen a lot of people in my chat bring up oswald versus mickey uh introducing this to kingdom hearts yes like oswald is yes. quadratum mickey <laughs> i would love if that was the that that was his uh his counterpart you know that would be so funny I like what please, Lee's saying. Please bring Sora needs to save Tron. That's true. Tron yes. is at, uh, mid arc. We're mid arc. We, we, don't have Tron. To, we don't have to go back to Tron World. It's okay. <laughs> we, we don't have to. Okay, I know it's we're data themed this year and it's sacrilegious to say, but I was not involved in that conversation about the theme choice this year. <laughs> I have 
disliked the Tron worlds as they have shown up in each KH game. Like the aesthetic yeah. is fine, but um, Light Cycle can go perish actually from KH two and KH three Tron world. Just I didn't vibe with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of Dream Drop. Did you say KH three Tron so world, or did I mishear that? Uh, Dream Drop. Dream Drop. Oh. Yeah, honestly, that's the one I vibed with the least with. Honestly. Yeah, it yeah. World. It was, yeah. I like I liked Cage Two's Tron World. I don't know, I liked it. Okay, like okay, I played Cage Two when I think I was in like maybe middle school, and I kept getting lost, and I didn't know what to do, and I was stuck there, and it looked different, and it was weird. And I just, you know, I have my middle school biases, and they will. It's hard to get my little heart to change. I di I didn't realize you had you had space paranoids related trauma. I did. My bad. I didn't. <laughs> I I wasn't aware of this. I'm going to fight you. <laughs> I'm going to come over there and fight you. I know you will. Yeah, I will. I mean, you did bring those boxing gloves to reconnect, so... Yeah. <laughs> uh, and she's been is. to my house before. <laughs> so... Yeah. She knows where I live. <laughs> she's, got, she's also got a good left hook, so I'd watch out. Yeah. Oh, I saw. I saw. <laughs> oh, Lord. But, yeah, no, there's so much room for Disney. Um, Do you guys... Because this is something I don't think is talked about enough. What about the Squareverse? Mm -hmm. Right, Dream Drop Distance mm -hmm. introduced World Ends With You. Is that a one-off thing, or do you see them maybe trying to introduce more series from Square? I don't... Uh... I, sort of. I'm I'm struggling in my head to think of the like the the, the Japanese uh, type Square games. I don't think there's really any chance of the uh, the more Western centric Square games like Life is Strange coming into Kingdom Hearts. I don't see that happening nearly so much. But um, like if you wanted to tell me that like the Chrono Cross characters might be coming over after like since we had that uh, port to Switch, I could believe you on that one. Can you imagine a cross between Toriyama and Nomura like that? Rest in peace. Yeah. But I'm with Lance. Yeah. Lance is talking about near Automata basically coming. And I feel like that would be amazing. I... And Yoko Taro has sung Nomura's praises numerous times. Yeah. I just feel like Disney won't allow that. Like Nier's a little too risque, a little too mature. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm being a party pooper. Maybe I'm being too hard on the mouse. But I don't know. I, I just don't see 2B's butt walking around <laughs> like that. Like, I yeah. I don't see that getting the I don't see the Dalmatians over there and 2B's butt over there. I just don't see. I, I'd i love it. Don't get me wrong. I just don't see it flying. I could see as like maybe a secret boss. Like there are some alternate costumes that the near games have. Like I think A2 has an alternate costume that's fairly well covered. Mm -hmm. And she could show up as a secret boss. I could believe that, but Yeah. It'd be, I... be a little harder otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd l I mean I'd love to see Automata. I love I loved Automata. I played them that I played the crap out of that uh when it came out. It was it was amazing. Um, so I'm not opposed to that. <laughs> so I think it's showing up. We've right, had weirder. These games got to be rated E, man. You do anything they do up to T, you lose some of your audience, and they're not going to. That's that. true. It's a, it is it has always been marketed towards towards you know kids. Um, just, and I don't, I don't. That was an M. That was an M rated game. So there's also that to consider. That's you what know. I'm saying. I'm yeah. I completely forgot that Square actually was the ones who put out Near Automata. Cause I'm like, oh yeah, Platinum made that game, and I forgot that Square published it. <laughs> yeah, Square Square did publish it. So, um, but they, uh, you know, Namara has said in interviews that like, there he felt that it might not be like necessary to have another a Final Fantasy character in this game. Like, why there wasn't one in Cage Three other than the the Moogles and the they were like allusions to final fantasy but there until remind of course there wasn't a final fantasy character character set of characters like we did in one two recode etc um 
So, but, you know, he also did say that now that he's been, like, talking with people, he's realized that it might be necessary, and he's surprised by that. Uh, so I don't think it's out of the question that we might see some of these more Square-centric uh, Final Fantasy characters come back. You know, maybe we'll get the uh, remake rebirth versions of our our uh, our FF seven kids uh, in Quadratum or something. You know. Well, I I feel like, and I've said this for a while, like Yozora is like permanent Final Fantasy inclusion. Like, oh yeah! Just, oh, just absolutely. About that, will he have his own Kingdom Hearts backstory? Yes, but we all know who this is. Oh we yeah! All know oh yeah! What that is, and if that oh, yeah. means less of. BB showing up and causing mischief to have like a character like Yazora be like centric to the plot. I don't know. As a guy who showed up for the Final Fantasy of it all, I'd actually I actually love that approach. Mm -hmm. Much yeah. I love the Radiant Garden gang. Like, what are you gonna do with them now? Mm -hmm. They had their yeah. story. They fleshed it out. It was Hollow Bastion. Now it's Radiant Garden. Nah, give me the Yazora of it all. Maybe throw in a new Cloud Sephiroth like FF7 thing. But you mm -hmm. know, that's that's really my. That's really Let me fly one, maybe, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not opposed to that approach either. That could be a new, that could be the new era Final Fantasy character. It's like, it's quote unquote not Cloud. It's not Squall. It's not Zidane. It's it's uh, it's so Zadane cool. or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know? So you know, it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yozora is Yozora is the, is the Noctis. So if we have more Yozora esque Final Fantasy characters, let's do it. Let's see what you can do with that. And I feel like you might even have a little bit more freedom with that than you would the actual Final Fantasy characters. That that's what I'm saying. Go go ahead, Violet. I'll just still cry that because Yozora is there, it means we're not going to actually have Noctis. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I mean, I know we're true, not Violet. You know, this is I know what we're I also really not like, you know, like there's some stuff going on, some body hopping, body snatching. Like I don't I'm not saying it's probable. I'm just saying it's possible. Are you saying that Namur is not salty enough about losing FF15 that he would <laughs> just completely forget it's real when he's designing I the guess, future Kingdom Hearts games? I guess what I'm saying is like and you kind of see this in Dissidia the original Noctis design where he had like a different outfit is mm -hmm. I believe it's technically a different trademark than the FF15 Noctis that was in Final Fantasy 15. I mm -hmm. think it's technically two separate trademarks and it's one of the reasons they won't let Nomura talk about FF15 or Noctis or anything like that. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I think I think he's definitely salty enough to do it, but there might just be some corporate jargon in the way that won't let him. It might, yeah. yeah NDA. But I, I'm just saying, you never know. You never know. Time will tell. Time will tell. Time will tell. All right. I want to ask you both about the Master of Masters. Because, I, you know, oh, he's boy. so obviously part of, like, the centric, um, the centric conflict in this upcoming saga. What are mm -hmm. your overall impressions of him? And what do you think is the biggest mystery about him? Because cool. I just want to say, personally, I think a lot of people get hung up on his name, but I feel mm -hmm. like there's actually way, way more going on than just his name. But if, mm -hmm. that's what, if that's what makes you tick, by all means, go ahead. Sure, sure. I mean, his name doesn't really matter at this point when there's so much body hopping and name swapping. Like, come on. It, he, his name could change like five times in the next 10 minutes, and it could not be important. But yeah, it'll, yeah, I'm also very much of the camp of I focus a lot more on the current conflicts and don't look ahead and theorize too terribly much. So I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll get there when we get there. It's fine. It's yeah, fine. <laughs> I, I'm admittedly, I know this is a theory based podcast and this is very, you know, I've, I've seen I've seen you talk with people and they've got these big like, oh, here's the here's the whole grand arc. This is where Namor is going going. But I'm kind of in the same camp as Violet here. You know, I, I'm not much of a theory guy. I have, you know, I have opinions on stuff as some of these previous questions had. But with the Master of Masters, I don't really, I don't know. And I think it's kind of, I, a part of me thinks that he might be 
kind of pushed out of the way. It could be a red herring, I don't know. But with Lushu kind of taking a little bit more of a centric role, this could be Master going like, I'm dying off, they're writing me out of the story, I just got here, but I'm not going to be important, you know? I have my Keyblade, good luck, kid. Uh, just to give, you know, he he might just be motivation for Lushu. So I think that um, my attention, and if this is, and like I said, if Namara's like waving his hand here, but the trick is back here with the Master of Masters, he's got me, he's got my eyes locked where he wants them, so... You know, and there is a bit of a magician vibe about the Master of Masters. You know, he's got the mm-hmm. he's got the vials and the potions on the wall and like a library. <laughs> so I, I could that's actually a very interesting idea that Nomura could be using the master, like, look here, look here, and there's something going on over here. That's that's exactly what we were fishing for. I um, <laughs> <laughs> see, for me it's his origin, which if we want to talk present, like it, it's mm-hmm. actually a lot of what took place in Union Cross that fascinates me the most. What he's mm-hmm. up to, what his grand scheme is, is anybody's guess. But it's like, he's clearly from somewhere else. Did he create mm-hmm. Daybreak Town? Like, is he just mm-hmm. like Ansem the Wise on brain steroids? <laughs> <laughs> Did he preserve his world and through data? Was that, Is his world where the original Kingdom Hearts is? And that's why we haven't seen the original Kingdom Hearts? Mm-hmm. The world as we know it, might maybe he set it up in a data world. Who knows? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just find him fascinating, and every day is a he again since he's so such a big part of the future. I um, I feel I find myself looking backwards when it comes to him more often than forwards. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I feel like that's where all the real answers are. But uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and, and that's where the answer. Sorry, that's where the answers are. If that's where the questions you're asking lead you. Yeah. Exactly. But you know, I will say this about him: like, is if if they do so, if they do do something with him, if he doesn't, you know, piece out of the series at this point, I he's such a fun character. He's such like a silly, you know. Oh, you think that's gross, do you? He's so out of left field and wacky that I would love to see what other antics he could possibly put on display for us. If he's gonna be, if he's gonna be our entertainer, I will be happily in the audience of his circus. Beautifully said, and I, I, I think what's so compelling about him is he just steals every scene he's in. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. who he shares the screen with. Any foreteller, young Xehanort, doesn't matter. He just, he commands the scene and compliments to Ray Chase, obviously, with the voice acting. But mm-hmm. honestly, the animators, too, with his body language. Mm-hmm. And like, like, there's a lot going into this character. It's it's interesting, and I... I I love the guy. He's barely been in the series, all things considered. And I love <laughs> yeah. Him. I love him. But let's see. When it comes to, like, looking ahead and what we can expect, mm-hmm. this is a real shot in the dark. So, you know, sure, 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 sure. don't put too much thought into it. I asked the audience not put too much stock in the responses. But what happens after the Missing Link Kingdom Hearts 4? Like, how long do you, I guess here's the real question. I guess here's a simpler way to word what I guess I'm getting at. How much longer do we have? Do you feel like Kingdom Hearts <laughs> is something that will perpetuate like Final Fantasy? Or do you feel like this is something that has an ending? It has an ending if Nomura wants to be done with it. <laughs> for, for me, in the words of Xemnas, Kingdom Hearts is... Done with it when Nomura wants it to be. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good answer. <laughs> no, I think I think Kingdom Hearts is eternal. I th- and I think March Caprice is living proof of that. I think it's very even if they stop putting out games, the fans okay will eventually die out. Who's I mean, of course, but until we die out, Kingdom Hearts isn't dead. You know, it's it's got its second life, if you will, if you've ever heard that. The terminology you're you die once when your body perishes you die the second time when the last person utters your name for the last time um so i think you know kingdom hearts truly is eternal <laughs> so it lives on in the hearts of its fans let me pick up pick your brain on that i think oh i think no matter what this is a series that lives on for a very long time i guess what mm-hmm. i'm asking is when Nomura either steps down or decides it's done, because right mm-hmm. now I'm with that Nomura decides when it's done, but the truth is Square Enix and Disney decide when it's done. N- yeah, oh yeah, Nomura oh yeah. Could go live the rest of his days in the Amazon, 
with, you know, like just disappear off the face of the earth. They're going to keep trucking. I guess what I'm saying is, do you see, I guess, does it get left up to mm-hmm. that? I mean, I guess you already no. answered. I guess you already I answered. Think, I think yeah. that if, if Nomura really wanted to be done, they could end Sora's story specifically. That's what I And then, thinking. but then they mm-hmm. could also, there are definitely a lot more stories that you can tell with this whole concept of Disney worlds and Keyblades. <laughs> so they could, they could pull a Pokemon and just end the thing, their story of your main character and start, start a nice, fresh new story. If I were them, I would just do it like yeah. 2000 year time skip. Just do a big time skip. Yeah, All the characters go. we know have moved on to another life. And just mm-hmm. fresh new characters. You know, put instead of Goofy, you got Max in the party. <laughs> you know, instead of Donald, maybe you have maybe you have Scrooge, you know, or mm-hmm. maybe you have Pluto this time. Like, who know like I just think it I see it as a series that if you just leave Nomura's era alone, you can keep mm-hmm. going. I do feel as though if they try to keep literally this saga going without him, I don't see that going well. I, I, I don't see, yeah. Pockets. Yeah, I and I think it, here's where the, here's where the truth lies. Here's the realistic aspect of uh, of the series comes in. What's going to print the money? That's going to be the thing that they Disney. I don't see them putting a lot of stock into Kingdom Hearts um, as far as putting their dollars where things happen. Square Enix, they Final Fantasy is Square Enix's baby. It, it is it is their first child. It is their firstborn that they love the most. Kingdom Hearts is the is the bastard child that proved uh that proved them uh to be better than um the expectations were, you know. But like you said, unless somebody else picks up picks up the reins and from my understanding, I'm not in the writer's room. I don't know what goes on, but um, I don't know if anybody else is going to pick up the writing reins from Namara and team. Uh, but if they decide to drop it, I don't see it lasting long because I don't see it printing as much money. Which is interesting to think about too, right? Because I feel like now if we could get a little scary, gaming is in a scary sure, sure. place right now. At least oh, absolutely. In industry, it's very it's scary to see. Yeah. Scary. If people aren't getting laid off, there's companies consolidating. And mm-hmm. look, if you look over Square Enix's reports, speaking as a dimwit, let me be clear about that. It, sure. it honestly feels like they're one or two bad years away from. And that's look like when I say bad year, I mean like a colossal bad year. It, yeah, 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 yeah. That, like, you know, think about it. Even Squaresoft went out and had to merge. I mean, Square mm-hmm. Enix is not immune to that same sort of solution and problem cycle so Mm -hmm. you know that's another thing about the future of the kingdom hearts that makes it a little bit unstable is that like you know i hope i like the idea of organizing it into sagas so it's like no matter what happens the dark seeker saga will always be a complete arc complete story beginning middle end conclusion um but think seeing that a consolidation a buyout or layoffs could be around any corner it's like yeah, you gotta che- we have to cherish what we have while we have it, you know. Especially and something I talk about on this show a lot is that Kingdom Hearts was a very niche thing up until a few years ago. Like it was mm-hmm. At, mm-hmm. until Kingdom Hearts three. Kingdom Hearts one was the best yeah. game in the series. Like it's a mm-hmm. series that started up here and then slowly was just going like this until it went boom higher than it's ever mm-hmm. been. So. I think when I look ahead to the future of Kingdom Hearts, one of the reasons why I think they're taking their time so much is because, hey, you have a bigger audience than you've ever had now, which means mm-hmm. there are more eyes on you than there ever have been before. Mm-hmm. So the next thing you drop will dictate how the next 10 years of your series is going to go. Mm-hmm. They need to be very careful. Yeah. It's also, I feel like game development, just for how advanced things are and how beautiful things look, it just takes longer than it used to. And that's what's also causing a lot of these longer wait times Mm -hmm. between these major, major games. Yeah, especially when you consider that, like, when you flash back to, like, the PS1, PS2 era, like, FF7, FF8, and FF9 all came out within three and a half years. Like, Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, and 2 all came out within three and a half years like you bring up an extra mm-hmm. point violet like they used to when things were simpler and games were just like what 
a hundred megabytes big, they used to pop yeah. these things out like calendar by calendar. But now that they've become these massive productions, like geez, I think Rebirth was like 150 gigs on my PS5. They're these massive productions. Huge. Like, Huge. Yeah, you're gonna be waiting longer, and that's why if I could just, I, I'm gonna give a Kingdom Hearts PSA, like. And I guess I see it because I see so many people like pining, pining, foaming at the mouth for the next Kingdom Hearts news. The truth is, this stuff is going to take a while without even without delays. So I yeah, guess what yeah. I, I guess my PSA is: make sure you get out and explore other franchises too. You know, while this is a whole episode about looking ahead and celebrating Kingdom Hearts, don't put so much pressure on Kingdom Hearts. You know, take the pressure off a little bit. Go enjoy maybe something else Square Enix has to offer. But yeah, because uh, like. Again, like, look, Kingdom Hearts 3 was five years ago. It's going to be at least six years between 3 and 4. And I just think that's the norm moving forward. I don't think we're going to have a... We ever go back to a time where there's two years in between number titles. I just don't think you can have that anymore. Oh, absolutely not. That's And, and what's even scarier is the only way that things are going to get faster at least that I see, is if we start relying on things, on even scarier things than waiting, you know? Things that... Like sweatshops. Like sweat, like (laughs) sweatshops, yes. (laughs) Sweatshops and, and, uh, non, non non-human things, uh, that we have to rely on that's, that's very scary, but... Oh, I thought you were talking about just, like, a big drop in quality, like, if they made games that... Also that, yes. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Are you implying that sweatshops... Are you implying that sweatshops are not (laughs) non-human? Don't... Don't don't worry about it. (laughs) But no, I mean, it's it's true. It's true, ultimately. And that's why I, you know, we brought it up earlier in the episode. I think we really are in this new landscape of the subtitles are gone. It's going to be mobile Mm -hmm. games and console games for the most part moving on. And I, I'm not saying that's a good thing. Observing something is true is not the same as supporting it. So absolutely, it. absolutely. But that mm-hmm. just seems to be what the landscape is now. Is you know, Square Enix seems to want a mobile game that people continuously log into, and then a console sequence of games that they can release. You see them doing it with FF7, Ever Crisis, and the trilogy. You see them doing mm-hmm. it with Near. Right? They have the anime running, the mobile game, and there's talks of a new game coming out. World Ends With You, they did an anime and the game. They're, they're, Square's taking a very multimedia approach to this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So I don't see... If a console game comes out now, Kingdom Hearts-wise, mm-hmm. it's more than likely going to be a numbered title. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, the, and something else to consider on that same note is that look at the consoles we have today. Our, the only consoles we really have today are switch xbox ps5 right i don't know what the xbox thing is called now i admittedly that's a little bit of a blind spot for me the xbox series x and s which that is one dumb and i could go on a long tangent about why <laughs> it's dumb but that's not why we're here today yeah the that the 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 s the s and the x the the gotta be very careful with how we say that <laughs> the, the know, xbox is kingdom hearts is naming is complicated right <laughs> right, we're, we're right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly but yeah that those are kind of the big three consoles if you're not on one of those console uh, we and we have pc as well right we got pc mm-hmm. um if you're not on one of those four you don't have it's i think it's safe to say you don't have a video game that's a, a non-non-mobile video game right we don't have a half console anymore like we used to we don't have a ds we don't have a uh psp we don't have a the right now that the closest thing to a half thing we have is a switch and that's kind of the expectations from fans have have elevated that to be on the level with PS5. We know technology wise it's not there, but the if the if we see something on one console, we want it on the other ones, right? Um, so we don't have these other consoles that we can experiment with like we used to. Um, so you know, there's less in, there might be a little bit less incentive to uh, release subtitle games because of that. Well, you know, Demura was branching out to those to test them, so. Dude, you're raising such a good point that's actually making me playfully angry, I suppose you could say. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder, and this is going to keep me up tonight, I think Square Enix is back on the wrong horses. I think ba- I think lo- locking everything into Sony and Microsoft, because they seem to be welcoming Oxb- Xbox with open arms lately, 
is the wrong move. Mm. Like, I actually think Kingdom Hearts would be more successful on a Nintendo Switch. Like, I actually think yeah. if you dropped... Yeah. yeah, right? Like, I yeah. actually think if you dropped Birth by Sleep 2 on Nintendo Switch, it would... It would it would out it would it would sell very well i guess is all i'm trying to say just because the switch's player mm-hmm. base is so huge but mm-hmm. square enix is almost to... like married to sony right now where it's like if you're going to marry yourself to advanced tech marry steam go marry pc <laughs> yeah like yeah they're, yeah they're trying to play this middle ground that's actually very much limiting their player base like if kingdom hearts 4 really dropped tomorrow there's a lot of people that don't have a ps5 News mm-hmm. clips, guys. Kingdom Hearts 4 yeah. will not be on PS4. So let's just make mm-hmm. that clear. So I, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, it takes us a little off topic here, but it's it's actually, I'm really thinking, I'm like, I'm wondering if this is actually really the wrong move. Like, if maybe the right move was to treat the Switch, like you said, like your PSP, your DS, and then just go full-blown on PC with the console stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, they'd, have to, they'd have to start on they'd, they'd have to start on switch by actually giving us real versions of yes. the kingdom Hearts games because cloud isn't real cloud isn't real the two but is said by two people <laughs> <laughs> you know where this joke is going the joke is over but you yeah. know <laughs> uh but yeah that's that's a hundred percent that's exactly it and and if you look I tend to think, and maybe this is me getting older and somebody who doesn't have kids, I don't really know. Maybe I'm blind to something that else is going on. But I kind of, I look at the Nintendo Switch and I look at the PS5 and I see the Switch being a lot more kid-friendly. I see the, um, I see a lot more kids playing around with with Switches and Nintendo being a household family name that I do them having a a PS4 or 5, etc. You know? So, and if they really want to capture that audience of, um, of the uh of kids and be in that age range switch is the way to go i would think yeah and, and like, <laughs> i'm not even saying make it your your co- like your number title i understand why they might want the oh yeah, 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 yeah number titles but you know this is an age-old conversation since it got announced but i mean come mm-hmm. on if missing link came out on switch you'd be printing money yeah 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 and absolutely well, if you look either that or the, go ahead violet they might be after, they might be after that microtransaction money of mobile games though that's the thing who, who prints the cash let me tell you something i bought chocobo gp on switch they could do microtransactions just fine overall <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not wrong you're not wrong <laughs> <laughs> but it's like uh, weird i guess i forgot where i was going but uh, you know but like you say chena it's like you know, a lot of your audience is kids, and like you mm-hmm. say, the Switch is already already has a player base of that audience, where the PS5 is more limited. And honestly, kids want gaming PCs more than they want a PS5. Yeah, you know, yeah. These days, so it's it's crazy to think about because I think they're very limited, and that's why we have this mo- these mobile games too, is because they're limited in what they could do because they are in a sense married to Sony lately, and that's mm-hmm. worked for them in the past. But, oh, God, I almost got back what I was going to say. But I lost it, so. Oh, if it's so. important, it's it'll fair. come back. It, it'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. It, definitely interrupt me if I if I made sense. It's like, chain, I got it. I'll be like, it's okay, back. say it. It's back. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it, it, I, I, it, it is weird that they're kind of married to Sodian, stuck there. Um, I And, you know, it might just be that, like, that's where home feels, you know? The first ever Kingdom Hearts game was on a PlayStation 2, you know? That's that that's where they think their loyal fan base is, is those Sony, those Sony people. The people that buy the PlayStations, right? Me. Me. I mean, I, that's are, me, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also like, buy, like, the Switch titles and stuff, too, so, you know. Sorry, go ahead, buy that. Like, are they wrong? Like, we are Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy fans. We we have PlayStations. Like, we're the wrong people to ask about that. <laughs> Bile, you're you right, you're right. Back. Bile, you brought it back. That's Same. the other thing. If you look in Japan at, like, the top-selling Switch games month to month, there's always Final Fantasy games on there. Is always, there really? Always. Oh. The FF, like, of course, because Rebirth was coming out, but one of the top-selling games in Japan the last few months on the Switch has been OG FF7. So, yeah, 
ah, because that's the other thing too about consoles, and you know, we've this has been discussed before, but it's like, you know, people in Japan typically they don't have as much leisure time as we do here in the West, so they do the majority of their gaming on like the Switch. That's why Switch games sell so much better in Japan mm-hmm. than PlayStation games do, just because that makes sense. These, these students or these salarymen and women they have long commutes. And something mm-hmm. like a Switch or a Steam Deck or something like that can be brought on a commute. Mobile games can be brought on a commute. But a PlayStation, for a lot of people, and, you know, maybe you're somebody who works two jobs because that's what you got to do. You know, there's a lot of people out there like that. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not everybody has time to sit on their console, but everybody can bring their Switch for lunch. For your mm-hmm. lunch break. You know, I know, you know, back when I was working two jobs, my Switch during my lunch breaks and my other break is that's how I got through. You know, and I'm mm-hmm. buying a lot of Switch games, playing a lot of Switch. So, you know, I think there's that component to it as well. You know, there's also so much more to do at home than there used to be. Video games used to kind of conquer home entertainment in a way that yeah, not as much anymore now that there's a million streaming apps and you can put YouTube on your TV. Like, TVs are now computers. Where, mm-hmm. you know, that's a different world in home entertainment back when there used to just be like a PS2 and like you that used to be your DVD player too, you know? Yeah. But now, you know, you don't need a DVD player. You just pull up Hulu, you pull up Netflix. I don't yeah. know. I'm rambling at this point. God, no, you just <laughs> reminded me of how my family even got our PS2 in the first place. Like my brother had a PS1 playing like sports games. And this isn't like, I was grade school, like second, third grade, like, you know, 2002, 2003 ish, maybe 2004. And we were planning a family vacation down to Disney World. And, you know, family, you know, with three kids, it's cheaper to get in the car and do a road trip than drive. So the parents managed to rig a system where we, like, took a small TV and, like, mounted it in the car. And so that my brother could play his games and me and my sister could watch movies, they bought a PS2 and hooked that up in our car for this 24-hour road trip from Detroit to Florida. I did a similar thing, not gonna <laughs> lie. I did a similar thing. I played Kingdom Hearts to the first time. Uh, I remember playing, uh, fighting Sephiroth in my mom's minivan. <laughs> but yeah, no, like we did, I didn't have Kingdom yeah. Hearts at, at that point. It was, we it got, the, got Kingdom Hearts probably like a year or two later, like after I had played my Chain of Memories on my Game Boy Advance, because that was in like fourth or fifth grade. So this was after the Disney trip. But yeah, that was how we got a PS2 in our house was that DVD player component to it. You, and like, that's what's crazy is now they're, they're, they're completely weaning out the disc drive. It's like you, yeah, the legacy yeah. of the PlayStation was built on its CD-ROM. How dare you? You're darn right. Also, by the way, I'm never going to get fighting Sephiroth in my mom's minivan out of my head. <laughs> like, there's too many layers to that. With the Nibble and Nibble Hunt. Oh many my many God, I didn't even think about that. layers to that. But I am not willing to feel back right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, oh my God. <laughs> So good. Other people are fighting. Other people are fighting their demons in their heart. I'm fighting stuff from than my mom's <laughs> minivan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, like, Anytime I see a minivan now, Sephiroth's theme is just going. Bum, 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 <laughs> bum. <laughs> just turn it down the road. Jesus Christ! Oh, that, that, oh, yeah, watch a turn signal and see if it flashes to the same tempo. Now <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. I love it. So do you guys think we get a Sephiroth boss fight back? Do you think that comes back? Or do you think we're done? You think it's over? If you want your Sephiroth, you got to buy FF7. Like, you think, <laughs> are they going to paywall Sephiroth out of Kingdom Hearts? Is that what's going on here? I mean, they don't need to advertise Final Fantasy to Kingdom Hearts fans anymore. They don't need to f- advertise Kingdom Hearts to Final Fantasy fans anymore. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Please. I'm just saying they've got, a, I'm saying. <laughs> they've got they've got a shiny new HD model of Sephiroth that they could just throw in whatever they wanted to. They do, okay, but okay. So there's a conversation. Do you believe KH4's graphics will be on Rebirth's level? 
Uh, I am going to uh, respectfully bow out of this conversation because I'm doing a very dumb thing with the Final Fantasy VII titles. Because um, I did not have a chance to play Final Fantasy growing up. My mom was uh, kind of big in her church group and they kind of thought Final Fantasy was evil. So I did not get to play those as a child. It's funny because there's so much like, <laughs> Christianity themes and inspiration in that. I know. Uh-huh. Final Fantasy so, is so funny. So, like, as an adult well, going back and playing a bunch of games. Church Demons was Pokemon. I just want to throw that out there. Those were my name. Yeah. Okay. Church Demons. Okay. Yeah. Same. So, um, so, I just kind of never got around to it as an adult playing games. So, at this point, I thought it would be very funny since I have extremely limited knowledge of FF7 to avoid as many spoilers as I can, wait till all the parts of the remake out, and are to play it blind from front to back. I. I I respect that approach, and we will we will we will respect that approach. So we'll, we'll yes. So what? FF seven talk. Okay. So let me see if I can find another way to put that. Then, um, do you, okay, okay. <laughs> do you believe Kingdom Hearts four will be on FF 16s graphical level? Is that safe? Is that safe? See, I hope now so. now I'm gonna bow out of this cover. <laughs> 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 okay, Stranger of Paradise, PS5 version. You're welcome. What are we doing? You, you think either of us have played that one? <laughs> <laughs> but no, if Square, Square always does. We get the idea, things. though. Yeah, they, yeah. They've, they've shown us in their trailer that they are planning to have a very high, very polished, shiny look for Quadratum. I see no reason why they won't make it pretty enough to match. Yeah, I would I would love it because honestly, I feel like so much of Kingdom Hearts history is being on the forefront of like graphics and not the graph. I, mean, I just want to say graphics are not nearly as important to me as aesthetic. However, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kingdom Hearts on PS2, those graphics caught everybody's attention. And yes, yes, I yes, think yes. That could be understated. I, I hope they go for the same thing in Cage 4 where people see that commercial on TV and they're like, that looks insane. You know, because one thing I love about Kingdom Hearts, which I think a lot of series unfortunately fall into, they're not in love with realism. They're not trying to look realistic. They're trying to look artistic. And sometimes they do mm-hmm. it better than others. I know there's a lot of people that prefer the PS2 aesthetic to the PS4 aesthetic. You know, it's a good conversation mm-hmm. to have. But I love that about Kingdom Hearts in that, yeah, they want the graphics to look as good and crisp and, you know, like, how do I put it? have as much depth as possible but i love that they're not that the series isn't moving towards making everyone just look real you know they're keeping they're keeping that Mm -hmm. nomura-esque aesthetic that we're used to i i'm very happy about it because i i think i think there's too much of a love for realism in art lately and that's that's me being a snobby dimwit but uh sometimes i'm a snob and that's what i have to say (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I'll just, from just looking back at gaming, every time they try to push for realism, it ages poorly. Like the first time we see realism, we're always like, hey, oh my God, this looks amazing. And then like five years later, you look back at it and I'm like, damn, I thought that was real. What? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, like you see that going back and like looking at, what was it? I was working at the video game store in college. I think it was some trailer for an NHL game was coming out and we're like, oh my God, all the people in the crowd, that looks so good. And that was like, you know, NHL probably like, what, 15 or 16? If I looked back at that now, I'd probably cry about that I thought that. <laughs> so we, we just, they, that's how realism evolves. There's like it, mm-hmm, bits and pieces. Exactly. Yeah, bits and pieces at a time that get improved on, and then we get used to that, and we need the next bit or piece to be improved on next. Very yeah, very exactly. Well said. Very well said. I um I think graphics are done a disservice when realism is brought in cuz I think there's some series it works for right like Resident Evil I think is a good example Resident Evil should yeah. try to look as real as possible like yeah no, yeah yeah no yeah. questions asked um I think for example and I was a big fan of this game but like Street Fighter 6 I feel like they lost some of their aesthetic. And I love Street Fighter 6. I think it's an incredible game. I'm not asking anybody to comment on it. But there mm-hmm. used to be more of this like bright anime aesthetic to it. And now it seems to really be pushing its graphics towards a real realistic sort of approach. And personally, mm-hmm. I don't like it. I feel like it lost a little something. I feel like it lost part of its identity in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, as long as Nomura's 
holding the reins, I don't think Kingdom Hearts is ever going to have this problem. Like, Quadratum is supposed to be the realism, and, like, it's more Nomura than ever. Yeah, and I, th well, I was going to say, I was going to bring that up because I think people are, uh, I've, I've seen a little bit of worry online. I, okay, I see a lot of worry online, but it, <laughs> specifically about the realism of how Sora looks and Quadratum looks and stuff. But here's what I, here's what I see. Um, Quadratum itself is supposed to be a realistic, real kind of world. It fits. It, it makes sense. If you look at Kingdom Hearts 3, we still had draw-dropping graphics and draw-dropping art styles. But if you look at uh, Sora in the Keyblade Graveyard, and you look at Sora in Olympus, and you look at Sora in uh, Kingdom of COVID, and you look at Sora in Arendelle, it looks that they're all different-looking Soras. They... And then we get Sora and pirates and our jaws drop to the floor. Because, and we get pirates, holy, exactly. Holy shit, that's the biggest glow up I've ever seen as the pirates world change from Kingdom Hearts 2 to exactly. 3. Exactly. So they have pirates that the, giving that realistic, like, that kind of realism a little bit, but it's still stylistic. Yep. And he, he doesn't look like that for the rest of the game. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think the, uh, the Kingdom Hearts team is very good about being treading the line of realism and art style and keeping that keeping art style intact when considering realism, you know? So I don't think we really have to worry about that for Kingdom Hearts specifically, which I'm thankful for. I am too, because I think it would... And you know what's cool too that I really say is like, as good as graphics have gotten, they still haven't caught up to Nomura's art. His art still oh. is best on paper, and that's the most mind blowing thing. Is the like you look at that twentieth anniversary artwork, the characters have never looked better. And graphics can't yeah. do it justice yet. We're not mm -hmm. can I bet and that's why there's so much more to graphics than just how realistic it looks, the pores on the characters' faces. It's can it truly emulate an artist's vision? And mm -hmm. we're closer than we've ever been, but it's crazy that like we're we're still not there yet. Can I beg for something very niche on this tangent of conversation? Yes. I would like to beg for, just, just for fun, doesn't have to be the whole thing, but show me what a Kingdom Hearts HD 2D would look like, not in the pixel art style, but hand-drawn by Nomura style. Show me what, what that would look like, please. Oh, you're kidding me. You're talking like 90s anime. Nomura style hand drawn frame by frame like that's what you're getting yeah oh. yeah show me what like an hd 2d would look like hand drawn by Nomura I'd lose it I would lose it speaking of Love losing it. it I believe we're on a 90 minute time pocket right we got to keep it at 90 minutes uh that is that's completely up to you uh that is uh we streamers or any streamers or can go as long as they want we're just going to be promoting you for that uh, pocket of time that you requested so okay all right well we, then we don't have to no, stop that, that's exactly up to you. an hour and a half we don't have to stop exactly there but no, 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 no. this is a good opportunity say uh is there anything either one of you wanted to discuss today or any kingdom hearts ideas you want to share that we haven't gotten around to yet <laughs> give me more off the wall stuff that's not traditional rpgs like i play a lot of rhythm games outside of playing Kingdom Hearts, like I mentioned, playing the Miku games earlier. Like, I love Melody of Memory to death, but give, give me more, like, random niche things, please. I beg. Pretty please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess, what is your what is your biggest expectation? I'm curious, Landy, uh, and Violet as well. What is your biggest expectation and your biggest hope for the series as we go forward? What is... And uh, if you need a little time to to sizzle on that i can uh, i can kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what i'm talking about uh ladies first if you're ready violet or i can go um, think about it i guess my only i really only have one like big hope for the future and that's while i'm playing the new games that they put out that i still love playing them and that's mm -hmm. really what it comes down to it's like even when kingdom hearts 3 came out people are like oh the pacing is this oh the writing is that and i'm like sure but I still 
loved when I was actually playing it and had the controller in my hand. Like, mm -hmm. just give, give me that. Make sure, as long as I still have that feeling where I feel like a kid and love playing it as the series goes on, that's all I need. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to echo a similar sentiment in the sense that, you know, I, for one, absolutely love and adore the Kingdom Hearts story, but this story wouldn't mean nearly as much to me if I didn't have so much fun playing the games and playing through the story mm -hmm. and through the narrative. So what I am hoping for Kingdom Hearts is I hope that its combat can keep up with the rest of the company because I'm yeah. someone who I will, I will sing Kingdom Hearts 3's combat praises, especially after all the patches and remind. I will sing, mm -hmm. I will sing that combat's praises forever. I really think it's riveting fun. The boss ladder of the limit cut is some of the best combat I've ever experienced in gaming. Mm -hmm. It's been half a decade since that game came out. And there have been a lot of good games with incredible combat systems like FF7 Rebirth, which is mm -hmm. a whole other level. So what I want to feel is I want to if this game this game is going to be on PS5, right? I don't want to just see it in the graphics. I want to feel it in the gameplay. I want to feel like this game gameplay wise could only exist on a PS5. I don't care if the graphics could only exist on a PS5. I don't care if the amount of data could only be contained by a PS5 uh hard drive. Show me that the gameplay needed to move up to PS5 because I will say they've successfully done that with FF7 when you play mm -hmm. Rebirth, which was for PS4 and Rebirth which is for PS5 you feel that jump and you're like yeah you couldn't do this game on PS4 it would be bottlenecked I'm asking for the mm -hmm. same thing from Kingdom Hearts I want to play Kingdom Hearts 4 yeah yeah like, no way this could have been on a PS4 like that that's what I want to feel from it that's what I'm hoping for mm-hmm both really good answers and i think that's uh, and hopefully that same positivity and that same hope for the future i would love to see more of from people because that's something that's you know i think people tend to place too much stock and do well it's got the combat has to be exactly uh the go in this direction i can't it can't have this you know this other thing uh, or the story can't delve into this topic too much. It's got to delve over here. Or the graphics, you know. It, it's Somebody's like, well, if it's not going this direction, I won't like it. Well, I'm, you know. That, yeah, it's, I'm it's, sorry that you're you're choosing to have a bad time, but it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to go off of the same thing. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to call uh, Violet out and watching my streamer report because I said the exact same thing. What, uh, what did I? <laughs> I know you I didn't, didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Damn, actually calling me out for that. Okay, listen, I've been busy, I've been busy this week. I love I know, March I know. Caprice. I love March Caprice, and I've I had kid. as much of it on as I could, but God damn it, I've had work to do for this weekend. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I kid. But I, I said this during my stream report. I'll echo it here again. Um, I want Kane, and, uh, and the bouncing off of you too, Landy, I want it to be fun. I want to laugh. I want Kingdom Hearts to make me laugh. I want Kingdom Hearts to make me cry. I want Kingdom Hearts to make me go and pog all over the place. I want Kingdom Hearts to be memorable and be something that I can talk about with my friends. Because like I said at the beginning, friends are keeping me here. Friends are going to be the thing that's going to be driving me through. And if I have something that I can share with them and bond over them with... That's I'm going to continue bonding over those things. Um, so I I'm yeah, I wanna have fun. That's on the that biggest topic, thing for me. On that topic of bonding over things with friends, um, Shane, would you like to share the fun story of how we experienced the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC? Yeah, I think that's kind of a, a core memory, if you will. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Amy will not let me leave, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> the so yeah, a little bit of a story time. Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC dropped January of 2020, right before the big panini. Uh, but we had also tickets to uh, tickets to the Near concert, which was it was the first round of the Near the Near concert. Um, and it came and it. To be fair, those dates came out first. We bought tickets. Okay, 
So the same wait, weekend. Wait, are, are you implying Rihanna. that you would have chosen not to go to the near concert if you knew Kingdom Hearts DLC was coming out? Is I would chose to go to. I might have chosen a later, da- a different date. Okay. Okay. Um, but I like the way that it worked out. It worked out the best way it could have. The uh, the same. Uh, sorry, I just read your comment. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it's the same weekend. I'm like, crap. I now have to between uh, work and this concert also play the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC because I'm either going to be spoiled by it because there's going to be people that, you know, near and Kingdom Hearts, they kind of touch their Square Enix, their video games, you know. Um, might be spoiled, I don't know, by just people talking in the lobby or whatever. I, and plus, I just want to I want to be in the know immediately, you know. So I, I, I told Violet, I'm like, hey, heads up. DLC drops this weekend, the near concert of this weekend, and we already we already got a hotel, we were already going together, whatever. And I'm like, this sucks. I'm gonna play as much as I can. Are you playing it? I don't know. And and she's like, Well, why don't you just bring your PS4 into the hotel room and we'll binge that over the weekend? And we're like, Okay. So the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC, we went, we played it in the hotel room. Uh, went to the near concert, came back, and just stayed in the hotel room the rest of the weekend. We were gonna go out and explore Chicago. Nope, didn't happen. We went out once to go get food, uh, and then came back and played the Kingdom Hearts three DLC, and we finished it that weekend, except for uh the Master the- Xehanort and Yozora fights. Yeah, we didn't get through the Master Xehanort fight, sadly. I the hype though, because we every boss fight we were trading the oh, controller yeah. back and forth because. You know, when the fights are brand new, no one knows how to do them yet. And they were hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, so it'd be like, we're, get, we're trying to get it. We're trying to get it. And we'd fail. And I'm like, man, my hands are shaking. And then, you know, eating the pizza that we had delivered to the hotel room. And then the uh, the very thin line we were walking before not getting noise complaints when we were screamed when we would get through each of these fights. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that was that was actually it. Like that's the reaction that we were having in this hotel room every single time we made it through these fights. Mm-hmm. Like, and then like, yeah, passing the controller off. Like, you ended up doing all of the 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 odd weapon fights, and I did yeah. most of the fights that were like sword like. I think is how that ended up going. Yeah, we called them the the sword based fights and the and and the not sword based fights. So people like Terranord, Xemnas, who were like sword fight. Uh, Violet handled those. I handled like the Luke sword and the Lark scenes and the Marluxes. Mm-hmm. So we we traded back and forth uh, and and we didn't. We also didn't know who was behind each door initially. Like we could get a guess from the symbols, but we we weren't one hundred percent sure. We're like, okay, this is a gear icon. This is probably Vanitas. And then there were like. It was like the heartless symbol. Okay, maybe that's Terranor, but maybe that could be like, it's like old, could old be Ansem. Right? Yeah, it's like that's kind of in the air, but it's like, oh, it might be a sword user. So we had to kind of guess and do our best judgment in there. But I don't think yeah. we ended up like we didn't plan it that way. It just kind of happened. Like I'm like I'm gonna try this one, and then it's like ah, he's got a sword. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked well because you did real well at those sword ones and i did real well at the at the not sword ones so yeah yeah that looks sword fight i still don't like doing it mm-hmm. don't make me do it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but wild. yeah but that's what it's all about though like that that right there is what it's all about that sounded like a exactly. fun hotel room to be oh, oh yes. absolutely absolutely i have to ask you got deep dish pizza in chicago I think we just had Domino's delivered. I think it's we Domino's. Don't, I don't we, remember. No, you we've had. De- no, you didn't. we've had. <laughs> you know you didn't have to leave. <laughs> we've we've had Chicago pizza before. Like it's we've okay. We've we we've, we've been to Chicago many times before. We've had the Chicago deep okay. dish before, but we got yeah. we got Domino's. But we absolutely had Domino's delivered. Okay. Yeah, it was Domino's. I remember that. Now. I will say with context. I'm not as nearly disappointed. Not even close. I'm glad. Because I I feel like that would have been the perfect layoff. Like, oh, you know, we're just in the hotel room all weekend. We're not experiencing Chicago. It's like, well, let's get Chicago pizza. Calls Domino's. Wait a minute. Domino's doesn't have deep dish pizza in Chicago? Uh, Yeah. Wait. So the last time I had deep dish pizza before that, I got sick. 
So I had kind of a, I had kind of a little bit, it might've just been the place. It might've just been the circumstances. I don't know. But uh, I wasn't crazy about that uh, in particular. I do like the, I do like the Jets deep dish though. That's, that's like, that's, yeah. but I know well, Chicago's different. I know, I know, but. Well, but we're going to be at Anime Central this year in Chicago. So maybe we, we'll get. Yeah, our... we go to Ace Net every year. So we'll, we'll experience it in, in a month we're or two here. So. A personal DM of a deep dish pizza. <laughs> we will report to you on the deep dish pizza in a couple of months. I'll report it publicly. You'll be you'll be tweeted at specifically about my deep dish pizza. This is a threat. <laughs> Can you have, like you imagine that with no context? Just a picture of like a deep dish pizza. You tag me and like put like an emoji holding a gun up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Did Landy step in? What the hell did he do? She got me hostage. She's getting you hostage next. Run, run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too good. Oh. Oh, you th- oh, you think it's not too late for him? That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> My fate has been sealed. All of this was decided. <laughs> say. It was in the Book of Prophecies, didn't you know? In the Did you know? Book of Proph- <laughs> no, I, I, they tore out that lost page. The lost page was about the deep dish pizza. Now we know yeah, that's, that's, that's that. shit. Uh huh. Because he Gula got mad because they ordered Domino's. Actually. <laughs> He was going for that goo lasagna. That was bad. Never mind. Ignore that. <laughs> the, the... That's so cur- that's so cursed. Never say that again. That came out before I could like filter it. The goo lasagna. The goo lasagna. Is there anything else you could do with that? Are there any other? Because now I want to open like a foreteller at Italian restaurant. <laughs> like have the ghoul lasagna and like you've, you've got your ava pasta ava pasta yeah the cut the, the, <laughs> the, the cava top ava copy copy yeah the uh let's see i said you need to i don't know there's some joke about no, we're, saying we're something just gonna with call this it the said parm and everyone's just gonna accept it i, I like know. that i like that yeah it's the the said parm the said yeah they just they he just stands there menacingly and they all eat it even if they hate it <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. the biggest waiter to just like watch you as you eat it. Like <laughs> that's part of the that's part of the experience. Why yeah, did like... you order that? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got Veacher says Lufredo for Lucio. Oh, oh, there we go, Lufredo. There we go. There we I go. Love, I love that. You, why did you? Why did you take my breadstick? Because that was my role. Not only did I order the pasta, but I also put cheese on it. <laughs> so instead of the master of masters, it's the pizza of pizzas, and it's given to you in like a black <laughs> sleeve, and you have to pull it no, out it's... to see what the toppings are, and it's like different every time. It's the, the master of mozzarella, actually. Oh, master of mozzarella! <laughs> the mozza of mozza. That's what it is. The mozza of mozza. <laughs> I'm with it. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Okay. One second. Oh. So can I go ahead? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go on a tangent. Can you go on. The masterella sticks. I think that's what we go with. <laughs> the masterella sticks. Masterella sticks. I like it. All right. <laughs> on, on that note, is there anything else that either anyone wanted to bring up for today's episode? <laughs> Other than our foreteller Italian restaurant, and maybe next episode we could do like a dandelion Mexican restaurant. Perfect. Well, next, we're, we're just gonna unpack uh, Sephiroth in the minivan for the entire time of the next episode. <laughs> yes. oh, my God, wait, wait. What's the exact quote? I'm literally scrolling up now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm Sephiroth fighting at... Sephiroth in my mom's minivan. <laughs> fighting Sephiroth in my mom's minivan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sephiroth in my mom's minivan. <laughs> Yeah, that's what your entire next episode is going to be spent unpacking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god, Abba. Abba had her own to-go orders. And she carried them out. <laughs> better ingredients, better pizza, Papa Namora. Papa Namora, Master Boss. <laughs> my man. Better ingredients, uh, better pizza. Papa, oh god, Papa Namora. Okay, that took me a little while to get. I just got it. <laughs> Up, John T. I'm yeah, embarrassed yeah. that took me that long. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that just means you need to go order yourself some pizza. 
I actually had I actually ate pizza today. Actually, I'll have you know. Oh, then I'm from same Uncle though. Vinny's. Actually, I got Uncle Vinny's pizza today. Oh, he's an uncle now. I mean, he was, I don't think it was he was, choice, he was but I guess he is. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> is it really anyone's choice to ever be an uncle? By the way, I missed Lands of Masters super chat earlier. Ten dollars super chat says Happy Marge. Happy Marge. Marge. Mm, homie. Yeah, well, well, my my voice isn't going that high anymore. I guess. Homie. <laughs> yeah, those days. Homie. There we go. <laughs> Happy March Caprice! Uh -huh. I used to do a good Mickey. I can't do it anymore. I used to. I'm getting old. Yeah. I'm getting old. All right. Uh. Skaz wants pizza. We all want pizza. I think. I think this might be a natural landing. I think this might be a. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah a that's fine. Landing. That's fine. With the P. With the. I, I mean, what better note could we end on than the Forteller Italian restaurant? I think. Mm. I think we should quit on a high note. But before uh, we wrap up, I do want to give you each. Kind of a closing piece. Maybe again talk about March Caprice a little bit. Uh, what you guys do when you're not planning March Caprice. Uh, I'll get a, take a minute here and say uh, I speak on behalf of a lot of us when I say I love that you bring us all together like this every year, and that you know it's great seeing you guys. Like I saw you both at Reconnect this year. Um, mm -hmm. But any excuse to bring us together in this fashion. There's something a little extra special about it, right? Like we can always all tune into oh, our yeah. to oh, our yeah. streams and stuff like that, but there's something different about when we all come together on this day, you know, and I don't know, just celebrate this series that you know it's great. Look, if this series doesn't exist, the three I, I, I posture that the three of us never meet. You know? Yeah. And I feel yeah. that way about a lot of people here in the chat. If this if this series oh, absolutely. Didn't exist, all of you in the chat, I wouldn't know you. We wouldn't have made these memories and experienced all this stuff. It's you know, experiences and memories, and that's something Kingdom Hearts teaches me, is that, like, experiences and memories are, like, the most precious thing of all, memories especially. And Kingdom Hearts always giving us an excuse to make new memories is something I'll be eternally grateful for. And the two of you playing your part in putting something like this together so that even when Square Enix doesn't have something new for us to chew on, we can still all come together, have fun, talk Kingdom Hearts, make some jokes, laugh, and it just makes the wait for Kingdom Hearts 4 that much easier. So I'll get off my soapbox here. I think I'm using that phrase properly. I'll hand it <laughs> over to you two. The floor is yours. All right, you go first, Cheney. Sorry, I forgot what the question was. Just, just close. I was so out. floored by it. Speak a little about Caprice yourself. and what you do when you're not planning March Caprice. Yeah, sure. Uh, so planning March Caprice is, is kind of my, it's my thing. Uh, I, I, March Caprice ends and then I die for nine months. Uh, no, but when I'm not, when I'm not busy planning March Caprice, uh, I am enjoying video games and I enjoy, uh, just kind of celebrating on Twitter and stuff. So you can usually find me on Twitter at, at the chain of fire. Uh, I stream very infrequently uh not don't count on me ever doing it uh ever again except for maybe ne me next march caprice but if you want to find me on twitch i am on twitch under cheney that's c-h-a-i-n-e-h -E um uh so go so if you want to if, all the links if you want to go follow there go right. for it oh perfect these, okay oh, i got all your links in the description they can grab them. perfect okay so uh Yep. So basically, but mostly I don't shut shut up on Twitter. Um, That's a Twitter But sport. yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, other than that, um, I also do work on the Kingdom Hearts database, uh, which is I am I compile information and I'm trying to make resources for people uh, in the Kingdom Hearts community who uh, do, I'm just trying to make resources that we don't have, uh, and I'm trying to just help us move along with. Uh, just making the games easier and more fun, you know. Uh, I I was I shouldn't say I'd, I. No, I won't. I won't credit myself on that. Um, but I I recently made a page about all the we didn't have a page that had all the list of Kingdom Hearts worlds per game that didn't exist for some reason. It's been twenty years that we didn't have that. So I went and made a list of worlds page in the Cage database. Uh, sometimes I'm also on the KH wiki and kind of adding to their their repertoire. Uh, so 
you can kind of find me there. There's not really a social aspect to that one, but you can kind of you can see my work over in Cage Database and the Cage Wiki. And that's that, I think those are the biggest things I work on when I'm not working on March Caprice. And Violet, the floor oh. is yours. And would you mind introducing everybody, at least verbally, to your little friend who's been taking uh, part of our conversation <laughs> in the back? Um, I so yeah, my little friend. I'm so I'm Violet. I am when I'm not doing March Caprice, which for March Caprice I help with central planning, but largely I run the coordinate the cosplay side of things. Um, outside of March Caprice, I do a competitive cosplay, so I travel to conventions and compete in their cosplay contests, which is what I'm doing this weekend. I'm at my friend's house. Uh, my friend, Sea Salt Lover, um, invited me to stay with him. And it's his roommate's bird, Pinky, has been talking during our conversation. I can send some photos of that for you guys later. I would like you to know that it was great, and I kept my cool super well when she landed on my head at one point during our talk. <laughs> <laughs> It was super great. I've got photos well, of that. I'll, I'll send them to you later. Um, <laughs> please do. So I am, yeah, I'm going to uh, Kauai Con out in Honolulu. That starts tomorrow. And yeah, I do cosplay outside of March Caprice. And with Namura not giving us, you know, much more outfits to eat from lately, I've been doing, you know, non-Kingdom Hearts cosplays. The most recent I finished up is the Toon Zelda, you know, from like Wind Waker, Minish Cap, all those good games. Mm -hmm. Classic. Classic. Hey, you know, uh, fun, fun fact, I, I believe when you won the uh, cosplay award at Cage 20, it was I that presented you with such award. It, that's true. That oh. is very true. Some, yeah. Some Landy Violet lore. That's right. There. Mm hmm God, I miss KH20 and KH Reconnect were so special. It yeah, shout was... out to guides. Shout out to KH. Oh, absolutely. Guides. Absolutely. Yeah, because like I should be on Twitch more than I am. I just find it hard to because my job has a rather unpredictable schedule at the best of days. And so yeah. I can't really carve out a consistent time week to week to always be streaming, which always makes me feel bad about trying to start when I can't be consistent. So I'm more on Twitter and Instagram. So like, I don't know the whole community of KH people on Twitch. So getting to meet you guys at those events was super cool. Yeah. And look, here's to many more. Be them or reconnect <laughs> caprices or anything the like. Um, Indeed. So thanks to the both of you for making time for this today. I know today especially is a very busy day for you both. So to make this time to hang out with me, have this chat, let me pick your brains a little bit. Um, I'm thankful for it and you know just thank you for making the time and thanks for letting me be a part of March Caprice all these years I think I think this is my third year doing Caprice we had uh, Orpheus Joshua on last year yep. and two years ago uh, Xander the, Z the artist that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and I had a good chat but uh, yeah I think we're gonna wrap it up here if you are hanging out with us on Twitch Please stick around for the raid. We're going to raid Treehouse, who is currently running a March Caprice Smash tournament. I think I got that right. But stick around. He's still doing that, that yeah. Yep, he's still rolling. Uh, thank you again for coming on. Thank you to everybody for hanging out. I'll get this. Thank fight. you for having us. Oh, it was my pleasure. You guys are welcome back anytime. I hope we could do it again. Uh, Absolutely. Chat, I love you guys. Thank you, chat, for always just being a part of the streams. Podcast wouldn't be the same without you. I promise to get this microphone fixed. And, uh, yeah, let's wrap it up here. We're going to raid Treehouse. We'll be live again this weekend. See you guys next time. Peace out, and happy March, Caprice. Happy March, happy Caprice. March Caprice.